ESPN, the Total Sports Network, presents the 1983 National Collegiate Basketball Championships. From the Civic Center in Hartford, Connecticut, it's the Southwestern Louisiana Rage and Cajuns versus the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. This game is brought to you by Lincoln Mercury, offering a complete range of contemporary automobiles for 1983 from Lynx to Lincoln. And by Xerox. Advancing office productivity worldwide. Hello, everyone, and welcome once again to the Civic Center in Hartford, Connecticut, an NCAA Eastern Regional first round action. In an earlier game here tonight, Syracuse is advanced to face Ohio State on Sunday. And now, in this game, we have Southwestern Louisiana getting set to go here in game two this evening. They'll face Rutgers, a pair of ball clubs from opposite part of the country. Southwestern Louisiana and Independent coming in here at 22 and 6. Hello, everybody. I'm Fred White along with Bill Raftery. And, Bill, we may have a very interesting match on our hands. Well, Rutgers is known for their defense. Usually over the years it's been offense, but they've held the opponents a 43% field goal percentage. On the other hand, Southwestern Louisiana is an aggressive, strong team. They challenge you at varying lengths of the floor. They can score, and uh, they play hard. Rutgers, the state school of New Jersey, we watched them warm up a while ago. They seem to have very good size. They look like a strong ball club. Well, Tom Young's had a fine year. He's had a great career at Rutgers, and everything depends on Roy Henson. He's been hurt, and uh, he's had a groin pull, and has never missed a practice in his career. Even yesterday, he came out, so he kept his string alive. 117 games, but they have good overall ability. It all depends how their defense can hold up if southwestern Louisiana is able to score easily and Rutgers has to come out and play the full length of the floor, they should have some problems. Well, it should be a great matchup in the middle of this ball game. You mentioned Roy Henson of Rutgers, and he has almost a physical mirror he's looking into tonight when he looks at the center from southwestern Louisiana, Dan Gay. Well, Dan Gay's got long arms. He's a, a good scorer and a fine rebounder. Uh, he can reject shots, but nobody rejects shots like Roy Henson. A lot of people compare him with some of the great centers in this country. He's got 142 blocks, but he's such a great intimidator. And the key is he has to stay out of foul trouble and hopefully physically well. That 142 blocks, just an astounding number. Let's talk about Southwestern Louisiana. That nickname, the Ragin' Cajuns, is not a misnomer in their case. They like to get it up and down the court. Well, I guess that's if you're a native born of French ancestry, you're a Cajun. That's what they explained to us. Yes, and, and I practiced yesterday people were falling on the floor they were banging one another a very aggressive team they will turn the ball over and against Rutgers zone even watching the practice yesterday they don't mind the turnover they'll keep coming at you uh, I'm sure it's going to be a tough physical game the officials are going to have to be on their toes Bobby Pascal has just done a tremendous job of putting that program back together down there and he's got him here in the NCAAs again well after all their troubles he was an assistant on the comeback after they had suspended their program He's aware of the community and what they want. He's done a fine job. And of course, after that tough loss against Marquette where they didn't play well, he wasn't so sure they would get in this tournament, but he complimented the NCAA selection committee. Of course, he got in, he would compliment them, but he thought they were very fair, basing it on strength of schedule and the losses against what type of opponents. We're getting set to go with NCAA East Regional first round action from the Civic Center in Hartford, Connecticut. Again, it's Southwestern Louisiana and Rutgers. We'll be back to meet the starting lineups right after this. Heating your home is burning you up and turning down the thermostat is leaving you cold. I think you'll be quite interested in this new revolutionary approach to heating your home. Hi, I'm Lou Pinella, and this is a solid state overhead heating panel. Here are three of the ways it can save you money and make you and your family more comfortable this winter. First, unlike convection heating systems that burn huge amounts of energy to superheat air, Energy Coat overhead heating panels bathe you and the objects around you in direct clean heat. Energy isn't wasted on heating air that only rises to the ceiling. 
Now that's maximum efficiency. Second, energy code heating panels are so effective you can set your existing thermostat six to eight degrees lower than usual and still keep you and your family warm and comfortable. Third, direct heating is so efficient and fast that you can be warm in any room in minutes, so you don't have to turn up the heat in the whole house just so the little guy can take a bath. Throughout the entire house or just in those problem areas, install them and forget them. Here's how to get more information, and if you tell them you heard it from me, Lou Pinella will send you an energy analysis kit free. For more information, call 1-800-544-1000. That's 1-800-544-1000. Tell them you heard it from Lou Pinella and receive a free energy analysis kit. Solid state heating panels manufactured by TVI Energy Corporation, Beltsville, Maryland, are so new, so unlike any other heating product on the market today, that they defy comparison. You must find out about this miraculous new technology for yourself. So call 1-800-544-1000. 1-800-544-1000. We're back live at the Civic Center in Hartford, Connecticut, again in an earlier game here tonight. Syracuse defeated Moorhead State, 74-59, and Syracuse will face Ohio State on Sunday. The winner of this game between Southwestern Louisiana and Rutgers will go against St. John. Now to meet the starting lineup, just join public address announcer Roger Baker. Here are the starting lineups. At the forwards, for Southwestern Louisiana, number 40, Graylin Warner. For Rutgers, number 35, Clarence Tillman. For Southwestern Louisiana, number 21, Dion Brown. For Rutgers, number 20, Kevin Black. At the centers for Southwestern Louisiana, number 44, Dan Gay. For Rutgers, number 32, Roy Hinson. At the guards for Southwestern Louisiana, number 11, George Almonds. For Rutgers, number 30, Rich Brunson. At the other guard spot for Southwestern Louisiana, number 15, Johnny Collins. <laughs> Rutgers, number 24, Brian Ellerby. The head coaches for USL, Bobby Pasco, and for Rutgers, Tom Young. The officials for tonight's second game, Gary Muncy from the Big Ten, Paul Hausman from the ACC and Charles Vaca from the Ohio Valley Conference. There you have met the starting lineups and the officials for tonight's game and we'll be back with a tip off right after these messages. At Ford Motor Company, quality is job one. This is one of 1,000 employee involvement groups formed by Ford and the UAW. Now every job has those built right into the main harness. This group improved the wiring system of the new 1983 Thunderbird. That takes away a lot of mistakes right there. Employee involvement, another reason Ford achieved the highest quality rating of any major American car or truck maker. Ford quality is job one. This is the Xerox 620 Memory Writer. Since it came out, the people who make the Selectric have brought out a new, improved electronic Model 85. But it can't print as fast as the 620. It can't be upgraded to add more memory. And it has no display to make revisions and correct mistakes before they get on paper. Like the Xerox 620 does. That's why more and more selective typists select the 620 Memory Writer from Xerox. The Raging Cajun cheerleaders have made the trip from Lafayette, Louisiana. And again, their Cajuns about to battle Rutgers, the Scarlet Knights from New Brunswick, New Jersey. Southwest Louisiana in at 22 and 6. Rutgers 22 and 7 out of the Atlantic 10 Conference will be put together an 11 and 5 record. And we are set to play basketball at the Hartford Civic Center. The only jump ball we'll see tonight. Nice to have you with us. Hope you enjoy the action. Great time of the year. Rutgers is going to come away with a tip. Brian Ellerby with the basketball. An extended 2-3 zone now. It'll be very active. Ellerby, Brunson, 
And along the right wing they go. Picked up by Kevin Black. Down on the post. They immediately get it to Henson. In and out it goes. Henson tries to tip and can't get it. The ball loose along the baseline. And picked up by Graylin Warner. Up comes Johnny Collins with a basketball. Collins, a little guy, a 5'10 senior. Rutgers will pack that 1-2-2 two, two in. Long try from the corner won't fall for Graylin Warner. Here comes Rutgers. They got it out on the break. Kevin Black's up there. And they're going to have a walking call. They got the ball stuck on his hip and couldn't pull it out of there. Good play. Johnny Collins coming over, causing the turnover. Bill Raftery, you've been through these NCAA tournaments in nearly every capacity. Those opening couple of moments, getting the tournament jitters out. I really believe the first basket is more important in this game than any other. Just to get on the board, get some comfort. Johnny Collins handles it. Rutgers in that zone. Almonds was deep in the corner, back out to Collins. Now they look at Warner in the corner. Rather passive attack right now. Looks like they're just sort of checking things out. Now Rutgers is known for this prevent type of defense. They do a good job. Long try from the corner by Almonds. Won't fall. The rebound to Rutgers. Roy Henson pulls it down. Awesome rebound. For Rutgers, Tillman can shoot it. Tillman is off the right side with it and rebound claim by Southwestern Louisiana's Braylon Warner. Johnny Collins gets it up and decides to hold it for a moment. A few years ago, they were saying, take Tilly to Philly when Tillman became eligible after transferring from Kentucky. A good outside shooter. Down along the baseline, that was John Kay with a basketball that was all tied up and the possession belongs to Southwestern Louisiana. It'll be handled inbounds by George Almonds. Johnny Collins. Almonds in the corner. Almonds quickly getting in the lane and gets the shot down. George Almonds gets the first two points of the basketball game. Southwestern Louisiana up by two. Good penetration on the big people's side. Tillman and Henson. Tillman, Henson, turnaround shot. Won't fall for him. Rebound, Southwestern Louisiana. That was Braylon Warner taking command. Johnny Collins again gets penetration, fires it up, won't fall. Collins has the rebound. The 5 10, he's the guy that pulled it off the offensive board. And a foul call down inside. On Black. Kevin Black picks up the first foul in the basketball game. Johnny Collins came up with that rebound before, and then we see the alley oop. And on the floor foul. Again, earlier tonight, Syracuse beat Moorhead State 74-59. There's a traveling call. Southwestern Louisiana turns it over. The Scarlet Knights of Rutgers get it back early on, 17-25 left in the game. Shot at Tom Young. He wasn't happy with the defense there. Got a break with the wall. Rutgers, Kevin Black. Brunson, Tillman. Yeah. Roy Henson slams it home for his first two points of the night. A little three-quarter court pressure. Just throw it up there. Henson will get it. Collins. Almost lost it. Richie Brunson has to work at the top of the key. Nice rebound by Deion Brown. Richie Brunson has to play the top of the key and then get down for the cutter flashing through the post. Well, just a word about togetherness. We'll get it in just a moment. Let's watch the try by Graylin Warner, and he gets it. The front line for Southwestern Louisiana. Brown, Graylin Warner, and Dan Gay have started 75 consecutive games together. Togetherness. A lot of it. And a lot of wins with that lineup. Brunson. Shot good off the wing by Clarence Tillman. He has two. And we have a 4-4 tie with 16-10 left in our first half. Johnny Collins. George Almonds. Braylon Warner tried to get it down the baseline, kicked away, and it belongs to Southwestern Louisiana. Good officiating. One official didn't see it, checked with the other. That 1-3-1 one, one that Rutgers runs is passive. They'll back up into their 1-2-2 two, two zone. Johnny Collins going to walk with the basketball, and it goes back to Rutgers 
A 4-4 tie, 15-56 left in our first half. Well, if Tillman can hit the long jump shot, it'll keep things open for Roy Hinson to roam box to box. Kevin Black. Cross-court pass, Tillman down inside. Black got the return feed, and he was fouled as he tried to take to the basket. I'll say one thing, Rutgers not bashful about taking it to the basket. Well, that foul on Dion Brown inside. No, they're very patient. They, of course, play against the zone every day in practice as Kevin Black gets the low post pass and the ensuing foul. Dion Brown commits the personal foul, his first. Team fouls even at one apiece. Let's watch Kevin Black. In and out. Won't drop for him. Black, a 74% free throw shooter, a 6'6 senior from Washington, D.C.'s Mackin High School. Of course, Kevin Black played guard for a few years with Rutgers, can handle the ball. Valuable asset. Now a pure forward. Second free throw won't drop. Tillman trying to keep it alive, and now we've got a foul call. Another one on Dean Brown. Dion Brown gets his second personal foul. Bang, bang. They came just like that. And that was one that you do not enjoy either as a player or as a coach of the chief variety. And it comes. Tillman's going to try it from long range. It won't fall. And here come the Raging Cajuns. Johnny Collins, penetration, is going to take the jumper. Won't fall for it. Roy Henson pulls it away for Rutgers, and up come the Scarlet Knights. Brian Ellerby down in the deep corner. Brunson back to Ellerby. Now Tillman. Now Brunson. Henson. Boy, they really look to Henson. Not a bad target. <laughs> no doubt where they want the ball, is it? Ellerby to Brunson. Back to Ellerby along the wing. Long try good. Brian Ellerby gets his first two points. Well, everybody backing up. They're questioning Rutgers' outside shooting, trying to protect against Henson and getting burned. Collins handling the basketball. Almonds fakes, takes the jump shot. Kind of a funny action on that jump shot, but George Almonds got it down, and he has four points. Almost a steal there by Warner. 6-6 six, six tie. Tillman in the lane. Sh shot won't drop, and there's Tillman getting it back in and out. Tillman again won't go. And Henson trying to run it down, can't get it. It's out of bounds and belongs to southwestern Louisiana. And we have a timeout taken here at the Hartford Civic Center. With 14 minutes and 34 seconds left in our first half, the score here with timeout called southwestern Louisiana 6, Rutgers 6, and we're back right after this. I love fine automobiles. I like the hum of a perfectly tuned engine. The look of a snappy sports car, the thrill of a good Formula One race, and I especially like the feeling of a solid old friend like this as I travel down the road. If you're like me, if you appreciate great cars, then get turned on by the finest cars in the world. You'll find them on the pages of Road and Track magazine. Do it now and save 50% off the regular subscription price. Save even more off the newsstand cost. Just call 1-800-544-2000 to subscribe. That's a toll-free call, 1-800-544-2000, to get one year, 12 exciting issues for only $8.97. You save 50%. Keep up with all the dramatic changes taking place as they happen. Subscribe to the authority, road and track. Call 1-800-544-2000 today. A look at the Rutgers bench gathered around Coach Tom Young, a 6-6 tie, southwestern Louisiana and Rutgers early on here at the Hartford Civic Center, 14-34 left in the first half. And everybody in the house got excited on this pass. Of course, Tillman, known for his shooting, dumps the ball to Roy Henson. And the game is simple, Fred. You <laughs> just get good players like Roy Henson, and everybody can do a good job on that bench. <laughs> I tell you what, seriously, that's a tough pass to throw. Rutgers not shooting at all well. Southwest Louisiana, three for eight from the floor. A few years ago, I would have said Tillman shot it. But now <laughs> he's looking. Southwestern Louisiana trying to take the lead. They're very patient attack. There's Graylon Warner. Nails it from the deep corner. Graylon Warner has four points. The 6'8 junior from New Orleans. 8-6. It's like in football. They seem to be attacking the big man's side here. Tillman and Henson not being able to get out and cover the area. Maybe Bobby Pascal got that from somebody. Down inside. Henson reverse slam. Henson has four. 
And you know at the other end, I'm not sure Dan Gay has touched the ball in the offense yet. Well, I think that's because the big people on the right side are not getting out. They're staying in. And that wasn't a bad athletic feat. Oh, that dunk by Henson. We're tied at eight. Almonds lets it go and hits it. George Almonds picks up his sixth point. We're 10 8, Southwestern Louisiana. And everything from the right side. Brunson to Tillman. Brunson handles the ball outside. Southwestern Louisiana moving the zone. Black to Ellerby. Brunson to LRB. He's going to try it from long range off the front of the rim and the rebound taken away by George Almonds for Southwestern Louisiana. Here come the Cajuns with a two point lead. 13 07 left in our first half. Deion Brown to Almonds to Collins. LRB with the reach in foul. Looking in at Gay. Well drilled team offensively. Non shooting below the limit. The first foul on Brian Ellerby. Second team foul on Rutgers. Collins with a basketball attacking the Rutgers zone. George Almonds, Collins. Now they swing it to the left side. Braylon Warner. Oh, he almost got that shot down. He had it knocked out of his hand and a foul called against Tillman. They took Henson out prior to that just to give him a rest. Tillman down low. Want to see good hands? Watch this almost is an offensive goal tip and watch the good patience. How about the catch and shot Graylin Warner got off after he'd almost turned the ball over. 10-8 Southwestern Louisiana, 12-40 left in first half action here at the Hartford Civic Center. NCAA East Regional first round action. George Almonds. Braylon Warner and a foul call. Kevin Black down in Lille. Second foul on Kevin Black. The fourth team foul on record. Southwestern Louisiana has been whistled for two. On that foul by Tillman, Dan Gay had good patience, not getting involved, and then the push off by Tillman. Two points has been the biggest lead in this game. 12 31 left in first half action, and it comes to Graylon Warner. He has seen the ball a lot tonight. Almonds has two, and Collins has been the trigger man. Graylon Warner now moves to the deep right hand corner. Back up top to Collins. Dan Gay in the middle of that zone. They simply can't get it there. So they play perimeter. Almond steps into the lane. Floating layup too strong. Well, the ball goes to Southwestern Louisiana. I'm not sure it would have. I thought not Chris Niberline touched it. I thought Ellerby got away with a foul also. Looked like he reached in. Lob outside to Collins. Needle line in the Rutgers lineup playing in the middle of that zone at the baseline now. Braylon Warner is going to take the jumper. Good. He's been fouled and the basket's going to count. And Tillman. Tillman draws his second foul. Braylon Warner, a nice move along the baseline. He now has six points. Well, everybody says that you go to the right, your dominant hand. They're an all right-handed team out there right now. But that's athletic talent on the left side or the right side. Braylon Warner, a smooth 6'8 junior from New Orleans, Booker T. Washington High School. Tillman's going to have to take a... Oh, he's back in. Excuse me, it's not Tillman coming on the floor. It's Roy Henson coming back in. He was on the bench. Chris Remley in the ballgame. Good shooter. Warner can't drop the free throw. Niebelein pulls the rebound off, and here comes Rutgers down by four. Now, four is the biggest lead in the game. With Tillman out of the game, Remley is another outside threat for Rutgers. Niebelein to battle. To Ellerby. Back to battle near the left corner. Deion Brown came out to shut him down. It's a very active zone, and they get out fast on the shooter. Always somebody near you. Brian Ellerby with the basketball. Rucker's very patient here. Absolutely, and of course, I think the defense is making them patient. Not really being free to get a good shot. Here's Battle gets it inside. Nieberlein is there. Chris Nieberlein has two points. And that pass was for Remley. <laughs> Nieberlein just snuck in on the bailout pass. 12-10 Southwestern Louisiana. 11 minutes left in first half action here in the Hartford Civic Center. Johnny Collins handling the basketball. 
George Almonds. They cross court to Graylin Warner. Almonds looked in at Deion Brown. It wasn't there. When is Dan Gay going to touch the ball? They've got Graylin Warner. Nope, Deion Brown, excuse me, for his first two points. 14 10 Cajuns. Good looking play. Remley's going to try it. Top of the circle. Good. Chris Remley off the bench to drill one. His first two points. Well, that's what he's known for. Good deep shooter. 14 12. Southwestern Louisiana with 10 15 left in the first half. Warner, Dan Kay, ball knocked loose, stripped out of there. It's out of bounds, and they're going to give it to Rutgers. Bodies hit the deck as they scramble for the loose ball there. Game doesn't mean much. <laughs> Not at this time of the year. Everybody's diving on the floor. John Paddle, I think, got hit in the mouth. There's Bobby Pascal, the Southwestern Louisiana coach. He's done quite a job there. 98 and 47 in his fifth year. And played for Glenn Wilkes down at Stetson, who's had his share of wins. Ten minutes left in first half action. John Battle along the baseline. Jeffers up and good. John Battle with his first two points for Rutgers. He's a 6 2 sophomore from Washington, D.C.'s McKinley High School. 14 14 tie here in the Hartford Civic Center. Rutgers and Southwestern Louisiana getting after one another. Johnny Collins, George Almonds, Jeffer. Not quite. And Graylin Warner fouled. Roy Henson got him from behind his first foul. Henson swiping. Almond's shot kind of fascinates me, Bill. It's peculiar. The release looks good until he gets it into the shooting area and he sort of twists his arm. Sort of gets it off the side. It looks like a semi throw, as opposed to a shot. A little bit like that shot you had last night. <laughs> oh, Ohio How University you? winning the ball game. Timeout taken here at the Hartford Civic Center with 9 minutes 38 seconds left in first half action. Southwestern Louisiana 14, Rutgers 14, and we'll have you back to Hartford right after you watch this. At Ford Motor Company, quality is job one. This is one of 1,000 employee involvement groups formed by Ford and the UAW. This group helped apply laser and computer technology to improve the paint finish of the new 1983 Cougar. Gonna get a consistent quality. Employee involvement, another reason Ford achieved the highest quality rating of any major American car or truck maker. Ford quality is job one. Telecast is presented by authority of the NCAA, and use of this program without written consent is prohibited. The announcers for this program have been approved and contracted by NCAA Productions. A look at the Southwestern Louisiana cheerleaders here in the Hartford Civic Center. Fred White along with Bill Raftery. Good to have you along, Southwestern Louisiana. Little rebounding edge in the early going. Well, it's a physical type of team, and they do get up. Hinson has to stay out of foul trouble and hopefully the injury won't harm him if Rutgers is to hang in. Southwestern Louisiana build a life quick basketball team. And now a 1-3-1 zone, trying to keep Hinson in the middle. This puts pressure on the weak side rebounders. Remley and Niederlein. Now they're back one 2 two. Almonds, ball goes inside, turn around, jump shot, Deion Brown, he has four. And the Cajuns back up by two with 9-17 left in first half action here. Brunson. Up to Niebermeyer, to John Battle for Rutgers. Dan Gay just stood under the cylinder to make sure there was no looping pass towards the goal. John Battle deep on the wing, to Brunson up top in the middle, Henson jumpers up, good. Nice touch by Roy Henson in the middle. He has a half dozen points, the 6'9 senior from Somerset, New Jersey. We're tied at 16. 850 left in the first half. It's interesting, Rutgers starts out 1-3-1. And the last time they went back into a 1 2 2 at the end of the sequence. Jumper, Deion Brown, and Deion Brown with his second quick bucket. He has six points. Three Southwestern Louisiana players have six. Almonds, Warner, and Brown. Shot falls. Battle. John Battle has four points for Rutgers. They're scoring really spread out. 
still tied at 18 with 823 left in the first half. Neither side's been able to control this one at all. Raylan Warner cross court to Allman. There's the Jeffries foul. Niebuhr line outside, but underneath, Deion Brown has been trying to set up Richie Brunson for a loop, an alley-oop to the basket because of the mismatch in size. The fake then to Brown. And George Amons getting set for the jumper and fouled by Chris Nieberlein. Almond shooting two, the first one no good. He's a 77% free throw shooter, a 6'3 freshman from Lakeland, Florida's Kathleen High School. Seven points, George Almas, he gets the second one down, the one point lead to Southwestern Louisiana. Chris Remley to Brunson, almost dropped it, but picks it up. Now he's gonna pull it right back out again as the Cajuns were back on defense. And of course, with that foul, Southwestern Louisiana now in the bonus with eight minutes left. Could be pivotal. And they have committed only two fouls themselves. Brunson to battle top of the circle, Niebuhr line. Good active defense by Southwestern Louisiana. Remley, nothing there for him. What's amazing is they can get out to play the shooter and get back in to double and triple on Henson. I think that's called quick, isn't it? <laughs> a little bit of speed. Remley lets it fly from the deep corner, short with a try, gets it back, floats up the jumper, in and out, and a traveling call. The ball belongs to Southwestern Louisiana. They get it back with a one-point lead, 7.28 left in first half action. Rutgers coach Tom Young shouting instructions along the sideline. Graylin Warner got out and got a piece of that jump shot. Little pressure now from Rutgers. Brunson leading on Collins, but he brings it across the timeline. 7-10 left in the first half. Graylin Warner pulls up and fires. It's in and out. Gay back up with it. Dan Gay finally got his hands on the ball and turned it into a quick two points with the offensive rebound. He had to get it himself, too. 21-18, Ragin' Cajuns with 6.56 left in the first half. The big guys used to hate when they get an offensive rebound, the guard would be hollering, get it back out. <laughs> the guy worked for it, I'm going to take one. Guards invented that playground game where you have to bring it back out to the line to start your offense again. <laughs> Centers did not invent that game. Absolutely. <laughs> Battle, Brunson, top of the circle. Neighbor line. Battle. Neighbor line. Leans in and gets it up and down. Nice work by Chris Neighbor line, a 6'8 senior. 21 20 Southwestern Louisiana. And again, full court pressure. Somewhat token pressure. Collins to Almonds. Now the trap comes and Almonds beats it. Takes it along the lane. Nice fake the shot up and good. Good piece of work by George Almonds and he has nine points. Terrific play getting Roy Hinson up and Hinson avoiding the foul. Another nice play. 23-20 Rage and Cajun. Six minutes left in the first half. Southwestern Louisiana leading Rutgers here at the Hartford Civic Center. Foul is called pushing off on Roy Hinson. That's his second foul. Black has two, Tillman has two, Henson has two. Well, what happens in a zone defense if you're not touching the ball, Roy Henson not touching it, the push off there being detected by the official on Dan Gay. Well, Tom Young, the Rutgers coach in a dangerous situation, his entire front line, they each have two personal fouls with 5.56 left in the first half, and he doesn't want them to go down to the locker room at halftime with three fouls. Well, he's got Kevin Black and Clarence Tillman on the bench, and I'm sure he said to Roy Henson, let them score if it means a foul. Avoid any contact. Dan Gay gets the free throw, his third point, the 6'9 senior from Tallahassee, Florida, starting his 74th straight game here tonight. For Southwestern Louisiana, he's played 118 games for the Cajuns, more than any player in history at that school. Guess them both. Roy Hinson on the other end. When you don't touch the ball, you get frustrated, aggravated, and you'll do a silly thing on occasion, as he did with the push off. Again, he's playing with that bothered by a groin injury. Neighbor line walk to the basketball. You mentioned Henson. I was talking about gay starts. Henson has started 117 games. Durable. How about 350 career blocks? How about 142 blocks this year for Henson? It's a career. There are those of us who tell you that two blocks is a career. Brandon Warner, George Almonds jumpers up in the circle. There's that funny little shot again, and he gets it. Almonds has 11. Well, you Rutgers can't call it funny when a guy's hitting it like that, I guess, can you? It's 
the type of shot that you've got to go out and play, and Rutgers likes to give you that deep jump shot. They're not known for their man-to-man -man this year. Over the years, they've been good at it. 27-20, Southwestern Louisiana. Remley answers with two. Rutgers needed him. Remley got him. He has four. And a 27-22 lead, Southwestern Louisiana, with five minutes left in the first half here at the Hartford Civic Center. In a semi-drought, squelched by that jump shot. Almonds, Collins. Looks at Graylin Warner in the corner, now gives it to him. He'll try the jumper, drilled it. Graylin Warner has eight points, 29-22, Southwestern Louisiana. I can't help but think they're picking on Hinson's side of the zone. That time he was on the jump shooter's side, didn't get out fast enough. Neighbor line to Brunson, to Ellerby, to Remley, for Rutgers. Ellerby to Henson, he's man in the middle, blocked by Graylin Warner, picked up by Collins. Collins is going to push it up. Now he's going to go with it. Shots up, won't drop. On Henson, number three. Push Deion Brown right under the basket. Well, we just said that the entire front line for Rutgers has two. You know Tom Young doesn't want a third one on anybody. He just got it on his big man. Roy Henson with 4.20 left in the first half here. And, this and was Roy not, Henson will sit down. This was not the type of play. And that's Nieberlein, I believe, the assistant coach. Gene, a graduate assistant. Hinson would have had that rebound without pushing. That's the sadness in that foul. So Henson sits down with three fouls. Deion Brown on the free throw line, 70% shooter. It's good. It's good free throw shooting team, 71% from the line as a team, same as Rutgers. Both these teams can shoot free throws. Deion Brown has seven points. But when you see a winning record, generally they're good foul shooting teams because of close pressure games. Deion Brown now has eight points. The Southwestern Louisiana cheerleaders happy with this timeout comes at 420. Left in our first half, Southwestern Louisiana 31, Rutgers 22, and we're back right after this. You're about to meet something unexpected. A family car designed for the driver, not just the family. Marquee from Mercury. This marquee has the nitro cushion suspension, so it gives you more than a smooth ride. It gives you a keen sense of precision and control at an unexpected price, under $9,400. The trim new marquee from Mercury. Now get 11.9% financing on marquee and other Lincoln Mercury cars. Hey, Joey, what's she really like? She's the most exciting woman I ever met. Atari introduces the woman of the year, Ms. Pac-Man. Just like the arcade classic, four different game screens, floating fruit, even pretzels. Reach for Ms. Pac-Man. Reach, reach, reach for Atari. Fred White and Bill Raftery back at the Hartford Civic Center, southwestern Louisiana with a nine-point lead over Rutgers. Look at that. That's an interesting stat right there. Rutgers bench has outscored the Cajuns by 12 to zip. However, the starters for Rutgers have managed only 10 points in the ball game. Well, if you told Tom Young you'd have 12 points out of your bench to zero for southwestern Louisiana, he would say we'll be ahead. But I think he's being forced to use the bench because of the fouls and changing their type of game. And now he's gambling with Tillman. He's trying to bring people in and out. Tillman with two. Black with two, both in the ballgame. Four minutes, ten seconds left in first half action here. Southwestern Louisiana up by nine over Rutgers. Ellerby to Brunson, to Tillman. Black. Tillman to Black. Boy, without Henson in there, they keep looking in the middle, and the big guy just isn't there. He's on the bench with three fouls. Nieberlein playing in the middle now. The other hands just don't seem to go up high enough. The tough zone, though. You, I, I believe they've got to penetrate it a little bit, split the guard, the guard forward. Well, they got it low, and Black just got surrounded the minute he caught the ball down at the baseline. I think you've got to create something and dish it off for the slots or the corner. Ellerby had a notion. Tillman takes it down inside. Black is fouled as he tries to get the shot away. Dan Gay, Let's see who they give this one to. Yes, Dan Gay. The first foul on Dan Gay and just the third foul on Southwestern Louisiana. A little height difference here. 
Devin Black pump faking and from the rear, Van Gay. Raylan Warner just held his ground. Black free throw off the heel of the rim. Kevin Black, a 74% free throw shooter. Gets the second one. First point for Kevin Black. 31-23, Southwestern Louisiana. 3-20 left in first half action here in Hartford. Man to man. Tom Young not waiting for the second half. George Almas charged with a walk. No, they're going to give it to Collins, a block, an offensive oh. block. Give Johnny Collins a foul then. The first foul on Collins, just the fourth team foul on Southwestern Louisiana. Now I, call, gets it back. I call that a turnover. You know, it's a case of, even though it's an offensive foul, etc., but it doesn't give you a chance to score. 31-23, Southwestern Louisiana. Alonzo Allen set to enter the Cajun lineup at the next opportunity. Ellerby to Black, deep in the corner to Rutgers. They work against the southwestern Louisiana zone, and it's been effective. Tillman back outside to Brunson. Rutgers can't find a seam in that zone anywhere. Now Tillman fires from the deep wing and knocks it down. Clarence Tillman has four. Clarence Tillman normally finds a seam because he just takes another step out. Loves to shoot that jump shot. Transfer from the University of Kentucky. Six-point lead now for Southwestern Louisiana with 2.24 left in the first half here. Now it's occasions that suddenly need a couple to pop them up. This is a well-schooled club also. Southwestern Louisiana, they run their sets. Southwestern Louisiana is out-rebounded Rutgers, 15 to 10 here. They have quick jumpers on that club, though. And they, they really don't foul needlessly. Only the three, they've been in good shape. Raylan Warner, now it's Deion Brown. Johnny Collins. Rutgers doing a good job on defense. It's for their advantage now, the clock winding down. Raylan Warner, a good poise on this southwestern Louisiana car. So patient. Now, Rutgers not known for the man-to-man, -man, has done a, a very good job. Seems to know the set. Almas, and there's a foul down in the lane. That's going to be against Dan Gay for throwing an elbow in the lane. And another turnover, Southwestern Louisiana. Now Rutgers down by six. The Scarlet Knights get the ball back with a minute 31 left in the first and half. The switch of defenses by Tom Young has let them creep back into the ball game. And I'm sure Tom Young is saying, now look, be as patient as we can be. Down six. Don't force it. Take a good one or use the clock. 128 left in first half action here as Rutgers brings it across the timeline. Again, the Knights down by six. Brian Ellerby. Brunson. The leader line is almost taken away by George Almond, but Rutgers saves it. Minute Guard, 12 up in the first half. Guards are quick out there, Fred. You have to be careful with the ball. Tillman looks too strong with that try. Braylon Brown up to George Almond with a minute one left in the first half. This is going to be the third foul on Tillman. No, 24. That's a break for Rutgers. It's Brian Ellerby, and it's his second foul. No. I think they're going to give this to Tillman. It is on Tillman. He'll help out here. Actually, it is yeah, it was on Tillman. And that wasn't a sound play, and it really compounded the bad shot he just took. Now you have Roy Henson on the bench for three, Clarence Tillman on the bench for three, the Rutgers front line in foul trouble, Kevin Black has two, and George Almonds gets the front end of the one and one down. He has 12 points in the first half of this basketball game. This one would put him right on his average of 13. Almonds, second free throw, drilled it. 13 that, points. That shot, I'm sorry, Fred, six down. Could have taken their time, stayed at six, or made it four. Well, it's a four-point swing. Absolutely. Now eight. 48 seconds left in the first half. Chris Remley to Kevin Black to Brunson. Another Peter Remley. Rutgers. Looking like they're going to play for the last shot. They're down by eight. I don't think they started playing for one, but 
With good defense and not being able to do anything, it looks as though they're going to try and get set up for one. 33-25, Southwestern Louisiana, 17 seconds left in our first half here. Black to Brunson to Ellerby, 12 seconds left in a half. Nine seconds left in a half. Ellerby fires from the top of the circle, in and out, and Black gets it. Kevin Black with a big offensive rebound, two seconds left in a half. Long throw, won't fall. And Ellerby took that shot too soon, but they got a break with the offensive rebound. And we have come to the end of one half of action here at the Hartford Civic Center. Our score at the end of one half. Southwestern Louisiana 33, Rutgers 27. We'll be back after these messages with our halftime program. Playboy. It brings you the best of everything. Behind the pages of Playboy, you'll find the authors who create the best sellers. Had a fear of success. Yes, I have. Interviewers who reveal the I person behind the personality. Award-winning sports analysts and forecasters who give you an up-close look at the teams, the players, and all the action. Playboy's cartoonists point out the humor in today's world with a rare mix of art and wit. <laughs> then there's Playboy's photographers, masters at capturing the beauty of the world's most breathtaking women. Playboy also tips you off to the latest styles, tunes you into the hottest sounds, and stirs your spirit of adventure with exciting new ideas. Informative, entertaining, and provocative. Playboy, the magazine that gives you a monthly ticket to the best of the good life. And right now, you can get 12 months of Playboy delivered right to you for only $18.50. That's half the newsstand price. So enjoy the very best, the wit, wisdom, and imagination of today's most creative people. Become a Playboy subscriber and step into the exciting world of Playboy. To order your subscription, phone toll-free 1-800-544-1000 and get 12 issues of Playboy for only $18.50. Save $18.50 off the newsstand price. Basic subscription rate, 12 issues, $22. And with your paid subscription, we'll send you this rich-looking rabbit head keychain as a free bonus gift. So phone toll-free 1-800-544-1000. Get a full year subscription to Playboy for only $18.50. You'll get the rabbit head keychain free with your paid subscription. So phone toll-free 1-800-544-1000. Again, we're back at the Hartford Civic Center. Fred White, Bill Raftery. We're at halftime. Southwestern Louisiana leading Rutgers 33-27. Bill, it seems, though, Rutgers had a lot of problems with the southwestern Louisiana zone, but you sit there and look at a six-point deficit at halftime, not too bad, really. Well, they're fortunate, and uh, I just mentioned to Louis Conaseca, who we were talking to earlier, what a tough zone, and he said it's a shame they're not more mature physically. They are an impressive team on the defensive end, but Rutgers has been hanging tough, getting some good shots, and the follow-up really helped at the end of the half. Kind of funny, really. You get the feeling Rutgers hasn't done that much, and then you look at the scoreboard, and they're sitting right there in pretty good shape. Well, again, I think when they've been crying and patient, they're getting a decent shot. The only one I can recall was Tillman's jump shot late, which didn't hit anything and ended up at a goal the other end. But they've gotten decent shots, unfortunately for them, with Henson in foul trouble. That's a problem in the second half. Well, they've got Henson and Tillman both with three personal fouls here at halftime, so they're going to have to be a little bit cautious when we go to second half play. We are at halftime in the Hartford Civic Center. There's your score, Southwestern Louisiana 33, Rutgers 27. We'll be back right after this. Last year, I told you that in an independent test for best color picture, the Sylvania Superset beat RCA, Zenith, and Sony. You won't beat Sony again. Hmm. Well, this year, we again asked over a thousand people which 19-inch TV had the best overall color picture. And more of them picked the Sylvania Superset over RCA and Zenith. You didn't beat Sony again. And over Sony, too. Not this guy. Oh, no, this guy. Sylvania, Sony. The Sylvania Superset. At halftime, the University of Southwestern Louisiana 33 and Rutgers 27. With me is Jake Krauthammer, who is a fraternity brother of Dave Gavitt. And I understand you made him what he is I today. Him everything he is today, he owes to me. There's no question about it. I raised him through the fraternity life at Dartmouth, uh, and he owes a great deal to me. 
Well, of course, you're a man behind the scenes, as the other athletic directors are in the Big East. And, of course, the job you've done along with Dave has been incredible. Well, the Big East is, uh, as, as you well know, Bill, has been something that we never dreamed could grow and flourish in such a short period of time like it has. Uh, I mean, it, it boggles everybody's mind, at least as far as the members of the Big East, maybe not as far as the media are concerned, because I think the media were really looking for something like this to happen. And uh, when it did happen, they just really jumped on and made our job a heck of a lot easier. And it isn't as though Syracuse was unsuccessful prior to the Big East. You had NCAA teams in 20 win seasons. Well, that's right. You know, when we joined the Big East, uh, we had been riding a wave of success with uh, 20, 21, 22, 23 game winning seasons. When I told Jim Behi we were joining the Big East, I said, you can forget those 20 game winning seasons uh, as far as the regular season is concerned, because I tell you, anybody in the Big East playing the scheduled uh, conference and non-conference that we're all playing now, you can win 20 games. You're a heck of a basketball team. Well, my quote, of course, was uh, it's not a coaches league, it's an AD's league. Coaches will end up <laughs> leaving the program. Well, it's a coaches and fans league, and I don't think there's any, I mean, an, an athletic director's and fans league. The, the coaches suffer a little bit, but I tell you, Jim, when Jim turns around in the Carrier Dome and sees 32,000 fans behind him all screaming for, for his team, he feels pretty good about that. Jake, we only have a few moments. <clears throat> Next week up at the Carrier Dome, an awesome responsibility. I know you'll have a ton of people up there but there's a lot of behind the scenes work to be done. Well, it's a lot of fun. We're, we're delighted to be hosting uh, the regional finals here in the East in the Carrier Dome. Uh, we've got over uh, 21,000 seats sold already, and we're just gonna keep selling them, and it depends a lot on who gets in, but if some of the named teams that are in the tournament right now, both here in Hartford and in Greensboro, they're gonna bring a lot of fans with them, and uh, we're looking forward to a great weekend next weekend. Well, I'm looking forward to going up to Syracuse and being your guest also, and we'll be back with more at half here with the University of Southwestern Louisiana leading a new guide is available for college athletes considering careers in professional sports. It offers the student help in a difficult area, the sports agent. An athlete's guide to agents, written by Robert H. Ruxin, is offered by the Indiana University Press. The book sells for $6.95. Send a check or money order plus $1.50 for postage and handling to Indiana University Press, Department KK, 10th and Morton Streets, Bloomington, Indiana, 47405. The preceding message provided by the NCAA. NCAA East Regional first round action at halftime. Southwestern Louisiana leading Rutgers 33-27. Now let's go back to the floor and Bill Raftery. Bill? All right, with me is a smiling Lou kind of second, rightfully so. Louie, one important question. Yesterday was St. Patrick's Day. Did you march? Let me tell you, I got two invitations to help me God. But unfortunately, we had practice and I couldn't go. Let me tell you, I marched on more St. Patrick's Day than you did. <laughs> March every year. I'm sure you've been invited to more. That's right. <laughs> All right, Louis, last week an emotional high for anybody who lived in the metropolitan area. Uh, the St. John's Club played so well, and it, it was such an emotional tournament for everybody. It was. I, I can't remember it for at least 20, 30 years. The old City College, the old St. John's, LIU and NYU. We haven't had that type of emotion, that feeling. You know what I'd like? I wish I could have put a little bit in the bottle. I would have taken it with me. And, Use a little bit Sunday. <laughs> well, I understand after the game there was a little celebration and uh, you had a ball with your club and with your uh, uh, fans. It was all the fans. The club went around that way. We just stayed with our little family. And it's a funny thing, really. I think that's part of the great tradition at St. John's. Win or lose, the priests come down in the dressing room. See, that's important. The good and the central part, they come down. Well, of course, I'm, I'm wondering whether they talk about you when you when they leave, if you lose. Well, this is something I always... <laughs> nah, the good thing sense of the They do it that way. All right, Louis. Don't lose too much. <laughs> Louis, this, this first half here, oh. an awesome zone. Rutgers is doing a great job just hanging in. They, they haven't been able to get an easy shot. Well, I'll tell you, this shot was Louisiana. I mean, uh, I'll tell you, though, on second thought, they beat Georgetown last year. And if they could beat Georgetown last year, you know they got to have a good club. Rutgers is doing a whale of a job, even though Henson and Tillman got three fouls apiece. They're doing a whale of a job hanging in there. It's a great ball game. Well, Louis, you're a national institution now. Everybody knows you all over the country, rightfully so. You've done a great job at that St. John's program. Well, thank you. I'm very, very happy. And as I said many times before, I hope every coach should have the opportunity to coach the kids that I've had these last two years. I know you've had a ball, and I'm sure we're going to have you on 
maybe Sunday, maybe later on in the week. I would love to. All right, Louis, thank you very much. And now we'll throw it back to Fred White. Louis Karnasek of St. John Club will play the winner of this one. At halftime here in the Hartford Civic Center, southwestern Louisiana, leading Rutgers 33-27. We pause now for a message from the NCAA. This product has helped millions to break the habit. No Smoke was formulated and designed by leading physicians in the field of smoking cessation and has been proven effective by more than 15 years of research and testing. You know, I tried to quit smoking for 15 years. Nothing worked until No Smoke. The great thing is, all you do is chew it like gum and it makes cigarettes taste awful. Now, by calling this toll-free number, you or perhaps someone you love can benefit from No Smoke. Call 1-800-544-1000. That's 1-800-544-1000. Use your MasterCard or Visa, or if you prefer, send your check or money order for $19.95 to No Smoke. Post Office Box 121, Plainville, Connecticut, 06062. You'll receive a three-week supply of No Smoke, with each tablet effective up to four hours, curbing your appetite for cigarettes. Don't wait. There will never be a better time than now to clear the air with no smoke. The essence of the new Thunderbird is performance. You ask, it answers. Acceleration. Handling. Braking. You demand Thunderbird responds as if it were a part of you. Your sixth sense on the road. Thunderbird for 83. Before we made it beautiful, we made it right. Have you driven a Ford lately? Back in the Civic Center in Hartford, Connecticut, and again at halftime, southwestern Louisiana up by six over the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. Fred White along with Bill Raftery. Nice to have you along. Here's the story and stats, Bill. Well, everything fairly even until you get to the area of foul shots with southwestern taking nine, making seven. And in that individual area, the foul problems. But the, the rebounding... Southwestern Louisiana, stronger off the glass. Everything else fairly even. Just you have to watch the foul problems for Rutgers now. They have Clarence Tillman and Roy Henson both with three. Kevin Black with two as we open the second half. Southwestern Louisiana only committed five team fouls first half. Tillman along the lane. Starting lineup intact for both clubs. Long try, Tillman off the heel of the rim. George Almonds clears it, and here comes Southwestern Louisiana on the run. Deion Brown got an air ball, and the ball is out of bounds, belongs to the Ragin' Cajuns. An eventful fast break there. <laughs> Johnny Collins, George Almonds. First time they've really had the opportunity to get down a break, right through the hands of Dan Gay. And up comes Rutgers with it. Brunson pushing it up, black. Now back to Rich Brunson. And again, the zone set for Southwestern Louisiana. No point changing it. It's pretty successful, Bill. Very strong club defensively. Mature. Henson short with a try, and he commits his fourth personal foul at the onset of the second half. Problems for the Rutgers Scarlet Knight. Oh, Tom Young over on the bench is beside himself. And you know they talked about it. Two of them were not of the masculine variety, where you're going strong, or more in pushing or reaching down and usually after a miss that's what happens and Roy Hinson knew immediately that it was a silly foul. Chris Bieberlein is in he got 58 seconds out of him in the second half and down he goes with his fourth foul and at what point will he bring him back in the game we'll find out later. Collins. Graylon Warner's shot won't fall nice save inside by Dan Kay he kept the ball alive. I think how long he stays out depends on the score of the ball game, how Southwestern Louisiana plays. Inside it goes, Dan Gay shots in and out. Rebound taken away by Clarence Tillman, and here comes Rutgers still down by six. Nothing has changed since halftime. Tillman tries it, gets it. Clarence Tillman has a half dozen points, 33-29, Southwestern Louisiana. Well, these Rutgers forwards, which all three are, are going to have to go out and play some basketball if they're going to get in it. We have 18 minutes left in this basketball game. And George Almonds down low. Fred with an offensive pick. He commits his first foul of the basketball game. 33-29 Southwestern Louisiana. 
leading Rutgers by four. Bobby Pascal, the head coach of the Raging Cajuns. Little controversy here yesterday when Bobby Pascal stayed and watched Rutgers worked out. Tom Young wasn't happy about it. I saw the same thing happen in Tampa last night. No, the day before yesterday at practice. Reverse layup. Kevin Black couldn't get it down. Good move, and Braylon Warner with the foul. Only his first. Now, that's smart basketball. Kevin Black knew he was overplayed left. The drop step across the basket, coming up with a power move and the foul. Kevin Black, three first half points, a 6'6 senior from Washington, D.C. He has four points in the ball game, and now a three-point lead for the Raging Cajuns of southwestern Louisiana, and Black to get Rutgers back with him, too, right here. You give a club confidence. Five for Kevin Black, two-point lead, southwestern Louisiana. Johnny Collins, short with a jumper. Brunson, and the game is tied. Rich Brunson has two, and the Scarlet Knights have caught southwestern Louisiana with 17-25 left in the basketball game. And Johnny Collins getting the shot block started that fast break. Braylon Warner down inside, Deion Brown, and a push-off called on Deion Brown. Now here's a team that committed five fouls the entire first half, and they've been called for three quick ones here in the second half. And that's Deion Brown's third. Inside, Tillman taking the high side. Bobby Pascal not liking what he's seen, looking for the timeout. The Cajuns head for the bench. Bobby Pascal wants to talk to him. This timeout comes with 17 minutes, 18 seconds left in the basketball game. And we're all tied up in the Hartford Civic Center. There's your score, Southwestern Louisiana 33, Rutgers 33. <laughs> Do I smell roast stock? For tonight, our anniversary. Yeah, great! <laughs> anniversary? Help! The bell system Yellow Pages talks when your fingers do the walking. You save trouble and time. Leslie's flowers, we get there fresh. How about fast? And fast. You remembered. I ordered the flowers after you started the duck. So, I burn the duck after you ordered the flowers. <laughs> get the Yellow Pages talking. Fresh and fast. Let your fingers do the walking. Higher Education Today. The NCAA is proud to present this special tour of our nation's colleges and universities. Have you ever looked into the many opportunities available at a college or university near your home? There's much more to a college campus than test tubes, classrooms, and chalkboards. Cultural activities. Concerts, museums, recreation, lasting friendships, endless opportunities to inspire the mind. Higher education today. Challenging, motivating the mind. The preceding message provided by the NCAA. There are a lot of exciting new things happening at Avis. They mean better service for you. I'm David Mahoney, chairman of Avis. You know, you can see it in the way our people care and take care of you. And the amazing wizard computer that makes Avis Express with no bus pass unique. And in our large Cadillac fleet that we rent at cutlass prices. All with free unlimited mileage. Come in and try us. You'll see for yourself why trying harder makes Avis second to none. Fred White, Bill Raffery back in the Hartford Civic Center, and Rutgers pitching a shutout here in the second half. Southwestern Louisiana hasn't scored. They're 0 for 4 from the floor. And actually, they've played better, Rutgers, with Henson out. And it, uh, sometimes a club will reach back. It's not so much that they're a better team without them, but they get some people into the game that feel they have to play at their peak for their club to win. And Roy Henson dejectedly, dejectedly looking on. He has four personal fouls. He sat down with 19.02 left in the game. Now 17.10 left in the contest. And his ball club, coming from six down at halftime, has caught Southwestern Louisiana. They haven't played that well, really. They've scored six points in three minutes, but the Cajuns haven't been able to get on the board. 
still trying to get off of Snide. Rutgers with the basketball. Well, that little switch to man to man by Rutgers at the end of the first half and down in the second half here has been very helpful to them. And I thought they'd go right inside and take advantage of Southwest, but they haven't been able to. Gentleman goes to the baseline for Kevin Black, and he's fouled by Dan Gay. And that's number three on Dan Gay. Now Dion Brown and Dan Gay each have three. And that foul situation is starting to swing a bit. And you're wondering what happened. All of a sudden, they can get the ball inside, and Southwestern Louisiana is more relaxed with Hinson out of the game. They're not as tenacious, not as aggressive. Eberlein clears it back outside. Brian Ellerby picks it up for the Scarlet Knights. Again, Rutgers trying to get in front here. Tillman, Brunson, and a deflection. George Almonds almost came up with a steal, and now they've got Black down there. He's fouled, and the ball is stuck. And I call that a neck ball. Well, he's the tease kids. You went for a layup with a neck ball. And one of the reasons I'm no longer coaching, we had a kid one year lead the country in neck balls. <laughs> <laughs> a good hustle by Richie Brunson getting it back to Tillman and now attracting the defense. Kevin Black drawing the foul and the neck ball. Six points for Kevin Black and the first time Rutgers has been in front since 19 to 18. They're up 34-33. Make it 35-33. Kevin Black is five for six on the free throw line and has seven points in the game. It's 35-33 Rutgers, 16-14 left in this basketball game. Again, Rutgers with the man-to-man. -man. Johnny Collins, southwestern Louisiana has not scored in the second half. Deion Brown tried to take it inside. It was stripped and taken away. And here comes Rutgers up by two. Brunson. Chris Nieberlein made that play. Good hands helping out Clarence Tillman. Kevin Black, cross-court pass to Brian Ellerby. Now outside to Tillman. Rich Brunson backs it out. Both ball clubs showing good patience. Southwestern Louisiana has gone four and a half minutes without a point at the onset of the second half. Rutgers has been very intelligent in their approach to this zone. Ellerby, Tillman, in the middle it goes. Black, short with a try. Ball contested for, and Graylon Warner pulls it out. Here comes Southwestern Louisiana. Chance to get it tied again. Collins, Warner, Collins, Almonds. Looks down inside, and Neon Brown, it wasn't there for him. And Graylon Warner, I saw him get hung up trying to come out at the other end. Bill, you saw it too. Somebody stepped on his heel, and now he's limping up at the other end. I believe Chris Neverline was down on the floor on top of Graylon Warner's heel. It seems to be all right. Southwestern Louisiana has turned it over four times this half, and Rutgers has not turned it over at all in the second half yet. Four turnovers in five minutes. Rutgers running inside and helping out. And this is something for a club who doesn't play man-to-man -man as a normal course of events. They're well schooled. George Almonds. Now they give the foul to Remley inside. Chris Remley just into the ball game. What he tried to do, Fred, was switch sides. He overplayed on the high side, then tried to get back down into a baseline deny and was detected for fouling. Tom Young, the Rutgers coach looking on. They're working down court from him. Collins, Almonds. This is Braylon Warner off the baseline. And finally, Southwestern Louisiana scores after five and a half minutes in the second half. 10 points, Graylon Warner, 35-35 tie here in the Hartford Civic Center. 14-25 left in the game. Rebounds in this half. Southwestern Louisiana's out-rebounded Rutgers 5-2, but that's their first two points this half. Brian Ellerby, Chris Remley. Nieberlein. Brunson, Remley, long try, good. That's what he's known for. Chris Lemmerently a shooter, and he now has six points in the ball game. Two-point lead to Rutgers with 13.53 left in the game. Rutgers is getting it inside and kicking it to the wings. Much better this half. Braylon Warner, Deion Brown. There's Warner inside. Nice work. Braylon Warner now has a dozen points. He scored all four Cajun points this half. 37-37 tie. 
Brunson. 13-30, left in the basketball game. Chris Remley to Brian Ellerby. Chris Remley has his hands full with Graylon Warner twice now going right after Chris Remley. Bill, both the coaches have their offense in front of them here in the second half. Does that ever make any difference to you when you coach where you had them, which half? Well, if we were playing good offense, I wanted them in front of me. <laughs> when they traveled, they didn't want to be in front of you, <laughs> which is what just happened. To right. it, it depended where we were. Some, some nights you'd rather your defense in front of you. It depended on the club you were playing, whether you were concerned about being blown out early. Uh, there's a lot of extingencies that uh, come into play. So your answer is sometimes. Occasionally. <laughs> 13 minutes left in this basketball game. We're knotted at 37. Collins, Almonds, long poke, no good off the back of the rim. Good save by Dan Gay. He kept it alive, and Graylon Warner picked it off. Gives to Collins to Almonds. Collins. Tom Young switching that defense because of the two passes inside the Graylon Warner. Oh, nice work. Deion Brown picked the pass out of the air and shoved it in. He has 10. And the Cajuns back up by two with 12.33 left in this game. If you're wondering why Richie Brunson goes in and out, he really needs a rest because of that operation. He had assist on his lung, and he is not capable of playing an extended period of time. Had it operated on last year. It's still affecting him, according to the coaches. Joe Boylan told me today it's tough on them because he means so much to their club. John Battle, rising jumper, good. John Battle really got in the air on the jump shot. He has six points. We're tied at 39. Pretty good basketball game making up here. John Rutgers Battle, hit four out of seven. Southwestern Louisiana three for eight second half. Strong looking. Fought for that jump shot. Rutgers coming up on the break and is taken away by Graylon Warner. Back come the Ragin Cajuns of Southwestern Louisiana with 11.41 left in this game. The Cajuns and Rutgers tied at 39 here at the Hartford Civic Center. Good battle going in the second half. At halftime, a six-point lead to southwestern Louisiana, and they didn't score for five and a half minutes at the start of the second half, and now we're not it. George Allman's shot won't go, but Deion Brown picks it off the floor. They attack the Rutgers zone. Third offensive rebound, two in the last two sequences. Deion Brown, the shot won't count. He's called for traveling. Rutgers with a chance to go in front with 11-17 left in this game. Sound 10 turnovers charged to southwestern Louisiana. Their coach, Bobby Pascal, looking on. Rutgers has only turned it over six times. The other only nine total turnovers first half. Good Five. sound ball game. They're taking care of the ball. And, of course, the defense, the two zones, or predominantly zones, curtail your turnovers. There's not as much motion with the ball. It's usually on a periphery. Block just one under 11, 10-58 left in the basketball game. 39-39 tied. Rutgers trying to get a lead here. Renly, Kevin Black, Brunson, Niederlein, nice ball handling. Rebley's got the shot, too strong with it. Loose on the floor and a foul called on Johnny Collins of Southwestern Louisiana, his second. That's the play I've been talking about. Rutgers has been able to get it into the mouth of the zone and kick it to the wings. And this is something they weren't doing in the first half. Chris Remley ending with an open shot, which he normally would nail. And now the hustle and Johnny Collins with the foul. Still tied at 39. Brunson. Battle. Remley. Rutgers is employing a skip pass now where they skip one or two people and go, go cross court. And in your era, that was a no-no. The funny how theories change. Set up the triangle and make short passes, right? Absolutely. Remley. Southwestern Louisiana scored just six points in the second half, and we have played nearly 10 minutes. Of course, the reason you're able to get away with that is there's so much help side defense. John Battle, too strong with it. Raylan Warner pulls it down. Here come the Cajuns with a chance to go in front. Still tied at 39. Southwestern Louisiana now with six points in this half, and that shot won't fall. Good steal by Almonds. Oh, and they almost turn it over. The ball is loose. And Richie Brunson down on the floor, fouling Fred. His first. Southwestern Louisiana now with six points in 10 minutes and 19 seconds of play in the second half, but they are still tied. 
Bobby Pascal. As the Cajuns headed his way to talk to them, time out here with nine minutes, 41 seconds left in this basketball game. Southwestern Louisiana 39, Rutgers 39. The good old days, they weren't so good. When Newsweek first hit the newsstands in 1933, events looked rather depressing. But helping people make better sense of the news paid off. While other magazines came and went, Newsweek earned loyal readers. And the more unpredictable world events became, the more people trusted us to separate fact from opinion and the truth from hearsay. General Douglas MacArthur has accepted formal and unconditional surrender. When the world started looking up, people still looked to us to keep them informed so they could make better decisions, better conversation, better sense of weekly events. And when the world began changing faster than anyone believed it could, they looked to Newsweek to put these changes in perspective. We don't know exactly how the world will look in another 50 years, but we do know one thing. Newsweek will be there to give you a better grip on it. If you haven't subscribed to Newsweek, it's time to see what you've been missing. We'll send you an introductory trial subscription to Newsweek at our low basic rate, just 75 cents an issue. If you'd been reading Newsweek every week, you would have known how soon we're likely to run out of water. What makes Richard Pryor a box office superstar? What we're really up to in Central America? And why we're still not finished in Vietnam? 50th anniversaries only happen once. Don't miss out. If you act now as an additional bonus, you'll receive this credit card size calculator absolutely free with your paid subscription. Call now, 1-800-544-2000. That's 1-800-544-2000. Ask our operators about Newsweek's Super Saver offer. Just pick up the phone and dial 1-800-544-2000. Call now. That's 1-800-544-2000. Louis well, Karnasek of the St. John's coach, his club will play the winner of this one. He's been sitting there writing furiously now. You would have thought he was making notes. If you were watching, you know what he's doing? Signing autographs. There you saw him hand one. How back. about him at the half lane claim to being Irish? And speaking of Irish, Chris Mullen, George Garrison, Bill Weddington, all his players, Ron LaFonte, his trainer, Ron Stewart, student manager, David Russell, wake up. And Cathal, the PR assistant to Bill Esposito. St. John sitting here watching this basketball game. They've got the winner Sunday. The other game Sunday, it will be Syracuse against Ohio State here in Hartford. The winner on to the Carrier Dome in the East Regional. Dan Gay. Ow. Is he ne tried to take it in the lane? Lieber line, Fred down low. And he's done a great job being asked to spend a lot of minutes on the floor. And when you're not accustomed to that, Errors usually occur. Bench scoring in this ball game. Cajuns still don't have a point off the bench. Rutgers has 16. Chris Nieberlein, his second foul. Team foul, Southwestern Louisiana six. Rutgers four in the second half. There's a fallacy in that stat. Nobody's been in the game for Southwestern. <laughs> Alonzo Allen was in very briefly. Shortly, that's right. That's right. Raylan Brown misses the shot. Brunson. It's been a while since anyone scored in this basketball game. In 11 minutes, Rutgers has scored 12 points. Southwestern Louisiana, six. Eight minutes, 49 seconds left in the basketball game. Still tied at 39. Brunson, almost a steal by Johnny Collins. Renly to battle. Battle pulls it back out. Rutgers will reset that offense. I'll tell you, it's very difficult to figure out how to attack this fine zone. The speed, height, and adjustments are very tough. There's one way. Battle steps in the middle of it, knocks the shot down. John Battle has eight points, and Rutgers up by two with 8.08 to play. Well, we said in the first half, you've got to split the guards or the wing in the guard, or you're not going to get anything. Johnny Collins, Waylon Warner, George Almonds. 
Warner, Collins, long try, in and out. And in the back, number 11, George Almonds, reaching over. Johnny Collins has had no shooting luck in this game. He was 0 for 3 in the first half. Ryan Ellerby coming back on the floor for Southwestern Louisiana. Rich Brunson, or rather for Rutgers, I'm sorry. Rich Brunson again will have to take a breather here. On the free throw line, Kevin Black. He's five for six on the line. Rutgers up by two. Won't fall for him. And Dion Brown clears the rebound. When Roy Henson of Rutgers sat down with his fourth foul, 1902 left in the game. First watch Brown shot too strong, rebounded by Renlin. Southwestern Louisiana is hit by six when Henson went out. And now they're up by two. Henson still down with 724 left in the game. And Coach Tom Young has the luxury of holding him on the bench a little bit longer. Of course, that's deceiving. If you ask Tom Young, would you rather play with Henson or without him? What do you think his answer would be? Like they him out there with two fouls on him, or none. 41-39 Rutgers, 7.07 left in the game. The Cajuns have scored just six points in the second half. John Battle, nice fake. Jepper got missed it all. Dan Gay rebounds to Johnny Collins. Collins pushes it up to the circle and now decides to pull it back. Raylan Warner to Collins. Almonds wants the shot, takes it. Too strong. And Gay hits the deck trying to say that a foul is called on Chris Neverlein. That'll be his third. Rutgers commits the foul with 6.43 left in the game. The 15 foul committed by Rutgers. They're already shooting one and one. Can't say enough about Nieberlein tonight, though. He's done a yeoman job. And the substitution now, Remley out. Tillman in. Let's make that. That is five team fouls on Rutgers. They were just slow getting it on the board. Oh, Collins touched that ball. And it's going to be a backcourt violation. Johnny Collins got a fingertip on him. The officials with a very alert call. That's interesting now. Bobby Pasco questioning it, of course. Feeling the tip wasn't controlled. But possession. 41-39, Rutgers. 6.32 left in the game. Neverline almost lost it, saves it, digs it out, and hands it back to Brian Ellerby. The Cajuns unable to score in the second half. They have managed just six points in almost 14 minutes. Tillman. Got it. Clarence Tillman has eight. Rector set by four. Their biggest lead of the basketball game. Six minutes. Six seconds left in this game. The Cajuns need to find some offense. They're going to try to do it. They're going to go talk, talk to their coach, Bobby Pascal. He has called this time out with six minutes, two seconds left here in the Civic Center in Hartford. Rutgers leading Southwestern Louisiana 43-39 as the Cajuns gather to talk about it. Before the flowers start blooming, beautify your home with True Test paints during spring spruce up at True Value Hardware Stores. You'll find their top quality Easy Care Latex Flat Enamel ideal for every room because it leaves a durable flat finish on walls and trim. And its super scrubbable formula makes True Test Easy Care perfect for high traffic areas. It's just $13.98 a gallon during spring spruce up at participating True Value hardware stores and home centers. Here's a brilliant solution to any tool chest. It's Bendelite Visual Tool. It's 10-inch long flexible shaft with high-intensity light is perfect for getting into those hard-to-reach places in your home, car, or shop. And Bendelite comes with some very practical accessories. You get the high-intensity light with flexible shaft, plus an extension to make Bendelite reach a full 27 inches. Attach this heavy-duty pickup magnet, and Bendelite lights your way to help retrieve dropped nuts and bolts. Use the handy clip-on magnet to light your work area while leaving both hands free. Plus, you get this incredible high-intensity inspection light with detachable extension mirror. And it all comes in a deluxe vinyl kit to keep you perfectly organized. All this for the low price of only $29.95. This offer is available only through this television ad. Charge it by calling toll-free 1-800-544-1000. Or send check or money order for $29.95 plus $250 for shipping and handling. Save time by charging it. 1-800-544-1000. Sure feels good taking it easy. 
Oh, what a day. I don't know what's tougher, roping steers or rassing them. It's times like now a guy really appreciates his scope. Just a pinch gives you real tobacco pleasure without lighting up. And that wintergreen flavor, that's really top notch. This is a mighty fine way to unwind. Go smokeless with Skoll or Copenhagen. A pinch is all it takes. The Rutgers fans are happy here at the Hartford Civic Center with 6.02 left in the game. Scarlet Knights up by four. That looks like a pretty big lead. Second half field goal shooting. Look at that. The Cajuns have gone cold. And it's been the switching defense. First to man to man. And then when Chris Remley had a few problems playing defensively, they switched back to the zone. And it's really created a problem. And now the shots aren't coming as easy outside. They're trying to jam it down. And Rutgers is active going after the ball. I thought the last couple of minutes you could really see southwestern Louisiana forcing the shot. They've scored six points in 14 minutes, and now everybody feels like they have to go five for three to get them back in the ballgame. Rich Brunson back in the lineup now for Rutgers. Collins. Raylan Warner. George Almonds. Warner. Down inside. Gay. You got it. They got it in the middle of the zone that time. Gay has six points. Two-point lead to Rutgers. 5.41 left in the game. And there's a case where Roy Hansen could have intimidated someone if he were in. Black. Neither line. Change in defense. They've gone man. Tillman fouled by Graylin Warner. Graylin Warner looking for the push-off. And I'll bet the change in defense wasn't because there's anything wrong with the defense. Not at all. I really think... Bobby Pascal getting nervous about the type of game. It's more of a Rutgers game, even though Rutgers gets 71 points versus their 75, only a four-point difference on the average. That Rutgers has been in these type of games. I think Bobby Pascal likes a higher scoring ball game. And going man trying to make something happen. Tillman on the free throw line, first time tonight, 76% shooter. Good. Nine points, Clarence Tillman. 531 left in the game. Rutgers by three. With Roy Henson on the bench, Rutgers has now outscored Southwestern Louisiana 18 to 8. Tillman now has 10. Four-point lead, Rutgers 525 left in the basketball game. Collins to Almonds. Braylon Warner to Collins. Cajuns haven't scored in seven minutes now. Warner trying to change it. Can't. Well, they didn't score in seven minutes. Gay got that basket just a few seconds ago. 5 0 5 left in the game. Rutgers by four. And they have the basketball. Their field goals are coming far between, though. Tillman to Brunson. Rutgers doesn't need to be in a hurry here. They have control of the game at the moment. 4.51 left in the contest. Brian Ellerby through the circle. Brunson along the baseline. Fakes. Nice shots up and good. Rich Brunson has four points. Rutgers up by six with 4.41 to play. And now the zone with the big man back there. And the steal. Richie Brunson. Brunson knocks it loose. Can't get it, but the tip good by Brian Ellerby. Ellerby has four points, and Rutgers up by eight with 424 to play. The Knights are going their way right now. I think Bobby Pesco wants the timeout. Now you might see the floor extend it. They've got to put more pressure on Rutgers, try and create some turnovers, and awakening the Rutgers contingent. Bill, the one thing I wonder, we have not seen Ray McCrew in the game for Southwestern Louisiana tonight. He is their zone buster. Well, of course, not knowing him on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, it's a pretty solid first group, and I think it's an overall back off of the team. And sometimes when you haven't put a player in, you're afraid to throw him in there when it's such a pressure-filled situation. Rutgers fans are happy with good reason. And Richie Brunson, who we said had to come in and out of the ball game, getting that hand the passing lane and showing no signs of ill health here. And the crawler off. And Ellerby with the follow. Southwestern Louisiana has scored just eight points in four minutes and 40, or in 1444. I'll get this right in a minute. In 1544, <laughs> there's 416 left in the game. 
Well, they had 33 at the half. They are struggling to get some points, and I would attribute that to the excellent defense of Rutgers. It's all setting Rutgers' way right now. Foul trouble. Henson coming back in now with four fouls. He sat down with 19.02, so they got nearly 15 minutes. Timeouts, Rutgers 5, Southwest Louisiana 2. Rutgers shooting 1-1. One one. They have one foul to spend before they put Southwestern Louisiana in the 1-1. One one. So things are going Rutgers' way right now. And I'm sure Bobby Pascal said, let's score quickly. And the zone is not permitting them to. Almonds. Raylan Warner. Almonds. Raylan Warner is going to take it. It's blocked. Parents. It was Roy Henson that came out and got it. And Rutgers has an eight-point lead in the basketball with 3.45 left in the game. And practically 40 seconds then used by the University of Southwestern Louisiana. Tillman deep on the wing, getting pressure from Warner. Cajuns man-to-man. -man. They are out of the zone, trying to make something happen. And it won't happen for him. This is to Brunson. Three-man delay with a pop out in the back. Ellerby picks it up out front with 322 left in the game. Man on the foul line. It's a triangle. You mentioned a triangle before. And then a stack low. Playing keep away, looking for a back door. Black. He didn't well, uh, dribble. I disagree with the call completely. He did not pick it up. So does this guy. Coach Tom Young. No way, Tom is saying. Turnover charge to Rutgers with 310 left in the game. And here come the Cajuns down by eight. Tom's done a wonderful job in his career at Rutgers tonight will be one of the highlights. They came into this game 22 and 7. They're 258 away from the win. If they can hold on, Collins can't make it happen on the baseline. Back to Almonds. Southwestern Louisiana taking a long time to find the shot. George Almonds can't get it. Go. Deion Brown, nice save. The offensive rebound. Braylon Warner again. Probably see a press after the goal. Collins quick move to the baseline, fadeaway jumper, air ball. Deion Brown is there. It was knocked away, and it belongs to Southwestern Louisiana. Brian Ellerby with the quick hands down underneath, Fred. And now we see the substitutes that you asked for. Roy DeGruy. McGrew off the bench and now. Alonzo Allen. Roy McGrew and Alonzo Allen check in for Southwestern Louisiana. McGrew on the floor for the first time. They tell us he's their zone buster. There he is with the basketball. We may find out. Almonds. Alonzo Allen. There's McCrew. Deep corner. Air ball. That's tough to come right off the pines and drill that jump shot. Takes an exceptional play. Rutgers still up by eight points with 2-12 left in the game. And now Rutgers takes a timeout. I think we all know what this means when we come back to action here. Two minutes, 12 seconds left in this basketball game. And Rutgers may be in command. With 2.12 left, the timeout call here in the Hartford Civic Center. There's your score. Rutgers 49, Southwestern Louisiana 41. Oh, my. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Thank you, Payne Weber. This marvelous painting is going once, going twice. So, to Mr. Harris. Thank you, Payne Weber. In this highly competitive financial world, Payne Weber believes the quality of life just might depend on the quality of your investments. Thank you, Payne Weber! Before I go on a trip, I check everything. And before I renewed my car insurance, I did some checking, too. I went to six different insurance companies and got six different rates. Those rates varied by more than 40%, even for a careful driver over 50, like me. Well, that made me stop and think. And that's why I'm glad I switched to Colonial Pen, the insurance specialist for people 50 and over. If you're a careful driver, 50 or over, Colonial Pen Insurance Company may save you 20, 40, 80 dollars on their full year policies. To find out if you too can save with Colonial Pen, just call our toll-free number. We'll rush you all the information you need to see if you qualify. There's no obligation and no sales agent will visit. We'll even send you this tire pressure gauge free just for calling. So call toll-free 1-800-544-2000. That's 1-800-544-2000. See for yourself why over half a million drivers have already switched to Colonial Pen. Watch closely. You're about to see something you've never seen before. 
here comes Fuji Film, with color picture so true to life, it's a real breakthrough. Fuji Film, Fuji's advanced technology has developed a precise color balance. The better the color balance, the truer the picture. Consistently brighter, clearer. With Fuji, seeing is believing. So see for yourself. Get Fuji Film and get the true picture. Fuji, official film of the Los Angeles 1984 Olympics. We're back at the Hartford Civic Center. Fred White along with Bill Raftery. Two minutes, 12 seconds left in this game. Rutgers with the basketball and an eight-point lead. Their coach, Tom Young, took that timeout. And we will see what his strategy is. There he is. There may have been some milk in that timeout. Milk the clock. Inbounds, it comes to Henson. Brunson and Ellerby are the guards. Nieberlein is on the floor. Kevin Black is out there. And you'll have to see it. More aggressive defense by Southwestern Louisiana. Ellerby to Black to Henson to Nieberlein. In a full spread, Rutgers just looking for passing lanes and cuts to the goal. I think you're going to have to see a, a trap or so. Foul called against George Almonds, his third foul. Let's check free throw percentages. Kevin Black, 74% shooter. Henson, 64%. Ellerby, 80%. Brunson, 74%. And Nieberlein, 70%. Not, not much to foul out there. Well, the only one hits it at 64, and a couple of players uh, on the bench, maybe, but all can nail that free throw. Rich Brunson could put Rutgers up by nine and does, and it could be a 10 point lead after the next free throw. Got a lane violation. Well, Brunson never even shot the free throw. Well, one of the Rutgers players walked in, and Tom Young can't believe it. Nothing comes easy. Stepped into the free throw lane. Free throw lane. That was ruled a kick. The ball still belongs to Southwestern Louisiana. A minute 37 left in this game. Rutgers up by nine. It's just been a team effort by Rutgers. It's hard to pick out one guy and say he did it. There's Graylin Warner. He now has 14 points, and it's a seven-point lead for the Scarlet Knights with a minute 28 to play. And the press, and they're looking to trap. Black. George Amons with his third foul, fourth foul, fourth excuse foul. me. A minute 19 left in the game. Rutgers still up by seven. If they can shoot free throws, they're in good shape. Bobby Pascal and now Tom Young. Ellerby, shot good. Brian Ellerby now has five points. Fifty two forty three Rutgers Ellerby gets them both in a minute 19 left to southwestern Louisiana moves it up. There's the score Rutgers by nine and a near turnover there but Almonds picks it up. It's been taking southwestern Louisiana so long to score it's been a problem. Alonzo Allen drills one from the deep corner his first two points. They tried to get the timeout weren't able to. Fifty eight seconds left in the game Brunson. Oh he hits the deck hard. The basket was good, but Brunson really hit the deck hard as McGrew, trying to stop him on the drive, collided with him. Hopefully he'll be able to get up and be all right. He took a heck of a shot. There's Rich Brunson. Just gathering himself there. Seeing daylight, and this is what you want. An uncontested layup, which he has, and then actually trying to get out of the way it looked worse than it was. I don't think there was any intention to harm at all. Thought he'd give it an effort to block the shot right to grow, but ended up hitting him. And Abe Sivis, the longtime trainer. Well, they're working on his right leg. I think he was jarred more than anything. That's Phil Sellers alongside Tom Young, the former great. Russell Runner. trying to get up very tenderly. Seems to be all right. 
Like he's just trying to gather himself together here. He says, help me up and I'll tell you how I feel. He's holding that left hip. Not Most, walking that badly. Any player who's not hurt will always say he's all right if he can shoot the foul. <laughs> and he's good. You don't want to. Oh, no, they had the trainer out there. He can't shoot it. That's true, too. And now a rule that might be changed someday, putting Tillman in because he's your outstanding free throw shooter. And eventually that rule might go by the boards, letting the opposing coach pick the shooter. Billy Packer contends, Bill, that the opposing coach should get a pick the shooter. That's what I meant. Yeah. Absolutely. I think someday you'll see that. Guess who hit pick? Tillman shoots it off the back of the rim. Isn't it the way? 54-45 Rutgers, 56 seconds to play. 76% shooter. Tillman gets the second one, and Rutgers up by 10, the biggest lead of the game. Tillman gets it back for Rutgers. And Hinson made a big play there. And then Alonzo Allen with the foul. And Brian Ellerby's giving him a fine game, an 80% shooter. Well, you know, a guy that doesn't seem like he's had much to do this game, but he's the guy that got the Rutgers offense started. John Battle hit a couple of quick buckets in the second half and kind of got things sort of broke it loose. It was like there was an ice jam out there, and he was the ice breaker. And there really wasn't a technique to it. He split the defenders and got into the teeth or mouth of the zone and started creating some things. Good ball game. Ryan Ellerby drills the free throw. He's hit three straight. He has seven points in the game. 56-45, and Rutgers appears to have put this one away with 43 seconds to play. Southwestern Louisiana managing just 12 points in the second half of this game. Calvin Peoples. There's the long shot by Roy McGrew. And the timeout they wanted before, weren't able to get. You can really see the difference in the benches, the hand slapping on the one hand and the quiet, the solitude of the University of Southwestern Louisiana bench. And they're a fine team. Bobby Pascal, we watched them work out. Fred, they do a good job. Unfortunately, second half tonight just couldn't get untracked. Well, it's been an amazingly cold second half for Southwestern Louisiana. They had 33 points at halftime. They had a six-point lead at halftime. And they have managed just, well, now 14 points in the second half. But they are down by nine with 35 seconds to play. A real struggle offensively. And a key would be those switching defenses, Fred. The man-to-man -man first, then back to the zone. Uh, I guess one of the breaks, really, for Rutgers was when Chris Remley was unable to guard Graylin Warner and Tom Young switched to his own. It's funny, out of a negative comes a positive. And the funny when Roy Henson going out of the game, his club down by six. He went sat down with his fourth foul, 1902 left in the game, and Rutgers takes the lead. And I, and I think that softened up University of Southwestern Louisiana. They actually, uh, and the booing in the background is the Rutgers fans with Louie. It's saying Louis <laughs> Kaneseka as he left for his pasta. <laughs> Rutgers with the basketball and the nine-point lead. 35 seconds left in the game. Southwestern Louisiana forces a turnover with 32 seconds left in the game. The Cajuns trying to keep breathing here. Well, for Rutgers, they must come up with the rebound and for Southwestern score, score fast. Tip. And Deion get the timeout. Brown got it on the third try, and the Cajuns again get a timeout. Southwestern Louisiana now is it 8 out of 27 shots in the second half, and that hasn't been enough. With 25 seconds left in the game. Score here, Rutgers 56, Southwestern Louisiana 49. Come fly with ESPN Tuesday. Skiers live on the edge when they compete in FIS World Cup jumping from Oslo, Norway. Watch them make their approach toward takeoff and ride the wind. It's a flight you won't forget. Climb aboard Tuesday on ESPN.
It seems this is the year many car makers are rediscovering the thrill of performance. It's also the 55th straight year BMW hasn't had to. BMW, the ultimate driving machine. ESPN's Women's Sports Wednesday features a special treat, the NCAA Division III Women's Basketball Championship on your Total Sports Network. You're looking at the southwestern Louisiana bench. Dejected bench right now with 25 seconds left in this game. Rutgers with a seven-point lead. Alonzo Allen looking on. Rather unhappy, of course. And these people, of course, are happy. The Rutgers cheerleading contingent here in the Hartford Civic Center. Rutgers about to pick up their 23rd win of the year. And again, southwestern Louisiana hitting just eight out of 27 shots in the second half of this game. That's under 30 percent. I never had to worry about that number of wins. I was normally available at this time of year. <laughs> I used to get that number in two years. Field goal percentage. Boy, does that tell a story. And so does Bob's face. Bobby Pascal, the southwestern Louisiana coach. And he will be back, I assure you, just in talking to him. Another turnover. Well. 25 seconds left. The Cajuns down by seven, and they are getting the job done now. Roy McCrew will handle the inbounds pass. The Cajuns need to score quickly. And it comes to Alonzo, Alonzo Allen. Long jump shot. Good. Alonzo Allen drills it. He has four points. Five-point lead Rucker. 16 seconds left in the game. They've got a man up there. Black. Here comes Ellerby. And that ought to do it. Boy, that was an important basket for Rutgers. A good comeback by... Alonzo Allen comes back and stuffs it. Two seconds left in the game, and it is all over. And they're given a two-shot foul now. They must shoot them. It's called an intentional foul. And what a dunk. He's known for his unearthly dunks, Alonzo Allen. Well, Alonzo Allen got that one down in good shape. But before this game... Is over. Chris Nieberlein will shoot the two free throws. We're going to look. And Nieberlein on the free throw line will we come back from this? This is Alonza Allen roaring down court. Rutgers knowing they've got a one, letting him go. And there's the left handed slam by Alonza Allen. But it was too little, too late. 58 53 Rutgers at the moment. Nieberlein gets the first free throw. He has five points. He's shooting him on the intentional foul. And that determines the final score. The final score is Rutgers 60, Southwestern Louisiana 53. So the Raging Cajuns close out their season at 22 and 7, and Rutgers at 23 and 7 advances now to play St. John's on Sunday here in the Hartford Civic Center. In the other game here, it'll be Syracuse against Ohio State. Again, the final score, Rutgers 60, Southwestern Louisiana 53. Let's go to the floor now, and Bill Raftery. A delighted Tom Young, of course. He's a little older than me. <laughs> we started together years ago, but you had to feel good, particularly after the first half. I felt, Billy, with Roy sitting down five minutes in foul trouble, we were six down, and I thought we played well. They shot extremely well. I told the kids at halftime, I don't think they can shoot that well. And we come out, and they didn't. The defense got it together. Nieberlein came off the bench, played great for us, so it was a good game for us. Absolutely a great game. And at the half, we had Louis Conasec on, and he said they're a mature team, and what a devastating defense that they have. That 2-3, they spread out, and they're quick enough to recover inside. They're, they're a good basketball team, and I thought that offensively, our bench did a heck of a job for us the first half. The second half, we come back out. And uh, I thought we played as well as we can play on both ends. We were very patient, got good shots, and we beat it up. Uh, I, I must compliment you. I thought the switching defenses were most important. Coming out man-to-man -man late in the first half, getting it down to six. Then in the second half, same thing, man-to-man. -man, and then when they made a move, switching to your one-two-two. -two. Well, I thought that our man-to-man -man worked very well for us. Both halves, they, got, they posted us up twice on Remley, so we went back to zone, and the switches worked. You know and I know some nights it don't work. Tonight it did. Well, battle, we thought, <laughs> we thought battle played terrific, penetrating. And the other thing, I thought you got the ball into the teeth of the zone and kicked it to the forwards for the open jump shot. Neverline does a great job of that. Actually does a better job of that than Roy. So uh, offensively, as you mentioned, battle, now he's done that for us, I guess, the last 15 games. He can do those things our other guards can't, really. But he can penetrate, really, and go over people, really. He's got a 
great vertical jump, and he shoots it well, so he really helped us. All right, Roy Henson, did you ever think you'd play that long without him and come out with such a great win? Bill, we haven't played that long without him. I don't know when, really, and uh, it says a lot for other kids because when he went out, and every once in a while this happens, as you know, it picked everybody else up. They played better, they played stronger, and especially Nieberlein. So to win without Roy for 20 minutes, that says a lot for the rest of our players. Well, you know, he was hurt coming in. You gave him a chance to rest. Yeah, he got a big chance to rest for our next basketball game. Well, you know, I saw how upset you were on the fourth foul by Roy, and he had three tonight that were of the cheap variety, and he hasn't been doing that in recent history. I tell you, Bill, he hasn't done that probably twice all year. And maybe it was excitement the NCAA. I mean, kids should get excited, and uh, maybe that was the price that we paid for, for being here, and uh, it's just not like Roy to do that. He didn't have a good basketball game, so watch out come Sunday. Well, the... the preparation for this particular club I know you didn't see them you saw one tape I understand and yet the kids had great poise they were deliberate on their offense and had very few turnovers I don't know what the total is but it might only be 11 or 12 at the most we had four at halftime and I really felt that our basketball team as you mentioned hey they're veterans we get four seniors out there and the, the sophomores that are playing have a lot of experience so they ran the offense I don't know that we took two or three bad shots all night long and that comes with experience mm -hmm. Tommy I'd love to talk to you more I know it's a uh, Great win for you, and I'm sure you're going to celebrate appropriately, and I look forward to seeing you Sunday. Thanks, Bill. I enjoyed it. <laughs> okay, Tom, and now back to Fred White. <laughs> All right, right now at the end of the ball game with me is Fred White. Of course, 60 to 53, and we've got two more young men coming in. I know you want to talk to them, Fred. Well, Roy Henson and Rich Brunson. We've got Rich Brunson and Roy Henson. Come on in, fellas. Roy Henson, congratulations. I know it was a tough night here. The foul problems I know must have been driving you crazy over there, but it all turned out all right. Yes, it was a pretty big win for us, and everybody's really happy for us. I know it, it must have really bothered you when you came back out. You had to sit out the last few minutes of the first half with three. Then bang, bang, in 58 seconds, the fourth foul came in the second half. You, you were down by six at the time. It must have been dejecting then. Yeah, I was somewhat disappointed. I think the refs really took me out of the game. They were calling um, small calls that I didn't think were necessary, but you can't argue with the refs all the time. You had a chance to sit on the bench and play coach there. And when you went out of the game, you're down by six. Your teammates came right back and got the lead. What did you see happening out there? Well, they knew that since I wasn't in the game, they had to reach down for the extra something that was inside of them, and I'm glad they did. They um, gave us the lift. Well, it was obviously the lift that we really needed, and I'm happy. I know you have to be happy with this lift. you got a ball game coming up Sunday now, a tough one against St. John's. You know a lot about them. They're really just right across the river from you. Yeah, we played St. John's last year and beat them at our place, so... They are basically the same team. They got a little better. Also, we have got a lot better also. So, you know, it should be a good game. Look forward to that. Oh, Looking you. forward. <laughs> All right. Well, let's hope that you don't have the foul problems come Sunday. You can stay out there and play. We know you're a spectacular player. One more question. I know you've been bothered by injuries a little bit too. How did it feel tonight? Well, it was, um, it was a little sore tonight, and, and I'm gonna do something for it tonight and tomorrow, and hopefully be ready by Sunday. You've been a spectacular shot blocker throughout your career, 142 on this season. That means that you're normally a very active player, so let's hope it all comes back for you. I hope so, too. Thank you. Very all right. Much. And Rich Brunson's here with us. Congratulations. Thanks a lot. It was a tough ball game, and it, it looked like for a long time southwestern Louisiana sat in that zone and really made it very difficult for you. It did. Uh, they had a uh, size advantage over us, but uh, like Coach said before the game, we went our offense well and uh, rebound, then we, uh, we'd be in good shape. I'd like to know what he talked about about defense at halftime of this basketball game because you really stopped Southwestern Louisiana and I'm not going to say they stopped themselves. I'll give you guys credit for getting it done. Right. Well, we didn't know too much about them that uh, they had two great shooters and two uh, good offensive players against the zone, which is number 40 and 11. And uh, he heard us the uh, first half. So second half, he said, uh, make sure we get a job done and cut the baseline off. And I think it worked a lot. But you've had to battle and come back from injuries. We just talked to Roy Henson about his injury a little bit. We know it's hampering him a little bit right now, but you've been a very courageous player, and I know you must be getting a lot of satisfaction out of this season. Yes, definitely. The injury uh, is passed now, and I feel great now. I could play uh, 40 minutes if I have to, uh, but of course we're all going to get tired sometimes. Well, they want to make sure you're fresh out there, so they get you in and out of the ball game quite a bit. Was, it, was there ever a point in, in the second half? It looked like it kind of it was a struggle still at the start of the second half. Then all of a sudden you got a little spurt and you caught him. And I thought I could see your ball club really come to life at that point. And maybe you're beginning to believe that you were going to win the ball game. Yes, I think that uh, whichever team would have had that spurt like we did, I thought uh, they'd be in good shape because both teams were like on the same level of playing. But uh, with the steal I made, I think that lifted our team a little more. 
You know, Richie, you never know if a game is over, but there was one particular play. You had just come in, you got your little rest, and scarf. I didn't see you play <laughs> with that. But I know you came in, and you played the top of the zone, and you got your hand in the passing lane, deflected the ball, big layup, and then, of course, the little injury. And I'm surprised <laughs> you didn't take the foul shot. Well, you know, sometimes you can uh, read uh, defense very well by looking at the uh, opposing player's eyes. And uh, I read his eyes a couple times down the court, and uh, I knew they wanted to go with the ball, so I overplayed it and uh, got the steal. Of course, the layup, and uh, then Tillman got a chance for two freebies. He doesn't like to score, does he? I told Tillman uh, I could have stayed and made those foul shots, uh, <laughs> but he, uh, he did okay. Listen, now, you've got to prepare for Sunday. I know you got a little bit of rest. What do you look for in the St. John's ball game? Uh, well, they're they a good ball club. Uh, I think we have a lot to prove as far as them being a Big East, and we're in a lang 10. There's been a lot of talk about the Big East all year, and I think we have a lot to prove for that. A I'm little thinking. conference pride, huh? Definitely. Yep. <laughs> and uh, by the way, the 10 blocks from my house, so of course I want to win. <laughs> Now, let me ask you this. So we're, first of all, we're very glad you're all right because you did hit the deck pretty hard down there after the layup attempt, and I know it must have been a little jolty. Yeah, it was a nasty spill, uh, but uh, I knew I wasn't really hurt. Just a matter of time of me getting up. I saw you grab your hip and, and kind of walk away, limping just a little bit. Are you sore at all? Uh, kind of, yeah. Well, this is a pretty courageous play. And again, congratulations to you. Congratulations to your ball club. Best of luck out here on Sunday against St. John. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Rich Brunson, outstanding job here tonight. Again, Rutgers. Getting control of this ball game really in the second half, Bill, and it sets it up for Sunday now here in the Hartford Civic Center. Well, two great defensive teams, St. John's and Rutgers, and I think it'll be the same type of game, physical, yet prying on offense and just taking good shots. And I know the southwestern Louisiana people must be disappointed, especially in the second half of this game. They won the first half of the ball game. They were up by six at halftime, and I think maybe in both ball games tonight, we, we saw a team, and uh, the team that lost it, you'd have to say, really just couldn't get their game going. Morehead State in the first game when Syracuse beats them. Same thing through of Southwestern Louisiana in the second game. Well, I think both coaches will be back in NCAA play next year. They've got good programs. They're well-drilled and just didn't play up to their capabilities tonight, but they're two fine programs. From the Hartford Civic Center for Bill Raftery, I'm Fred White saying thanks for watching and good night. Announcing Trackmaster Wrench, the only wrench you'll ever need. Two wrenches fit every size nut or bolt, metric or standard. Its exclusive ratchet action gives you all the leverage you'll need and in the toughest spots. No adjustments or extensions required. Track replaces channel locks, box end wrenches, crescent wrenches, and socket sets. Add Trackmaster Wrench to your tool chest for the low cost of only $19.95. Charge it now and save COD charges by calling toll-free 1-800-543-1300 or send check or money order for $19.95 plus $2. For shipping and handling. At only $19.95, you can afford to buy track for your home, car, and business. Track comes in handy everywhere and it's built to last. Order the Master Wrench by Track. It's the only wrench you'll ever need. To order your Track Master, use your credit card and avoid COD charges by calling toll free 1 800 543 1300 or send check or money order to Direct Video Marketing Track Master, Box 121, Plainville, Connecticut 06062. That number to call is 1 800 543 1300. Vitala says it's true. A man has to keep himself under control. 4,000 feet, 3,000 feet, 2,000 feet. But I'm under control. After you dry and style your hair, use the Vitalis pump for a terrific natural look you can keep under control just the way you want all day long. My horse in the fifth finished first in the sixth. But I'm under control. Who says it's true? Vitalis says it's true. A man has to keep himself under control. I'm under control. Our Vitalis most valuable players for the Southwestern Louisiana Rutgers game for the losing Ragin' Cajuns of Southwestern Louisiana. Forward Braylon Warner led the way with 14 points and for the winning Scarlet Knights of Rutgers, the fine all-around play of forward Rich Brunson. He only had seven points, but his work on the boards and ball handling was just superior. Congratulations to both young players, Braylon Warner of Southwestern Louisiana and Rich Brunson of Rutgers, our Vitalis most valuable player.
promotional support provided by United Airlines, where discount fares count. After all, we're out to save money, not waste it. Right, United? Thank you.